Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video lecture, we'll discuss an important metabolic condition which can affect young individuals that is Wilson's disease. You can download the PDF of this lecture from MediLectures app. Link is in the description. You can also check out Harrison based revision videos if you want to revise major units of Harrison in 35 hours of video content. And these revision videos are currently priced at rupees 199 only. So let's start this presentation with a case. A 17 year old boy presents with tremors, slurred speech, and difficulty walking. His school performance has declined. On examination, he has hepatomegaly, subtle signs of dystonia. Slit lamp examination shows golden brown rings at the corneal margin. So with the help of this lecture, we will discuss what is going on in this patient and what all systems can be affected by Wilson's disease. Starting with the intro, Wilson's disease is a rare autosomal recessive disorder which is characterized by excessive deposition of copper in liver, brain as well as other tissues due to impaired copper excretion into the bile. So why does this disease occur? It occurs due to mutation in gene ATP7B which is also known as Wilson's ATPase. So it is a highly conserved P-type ATPase that normally mediates copper removal from liver via biliary excretion and thus prevents copper accumulation in the brain. This gene is present on chromosome 13Q. Inheritance of this condition is autosomal recessive and onset usually occurs between 3 to 20 years of age. Now please do not confuse this gene with another similar gene which is ATP7A gene. This is a X-linked gene and mutation of this gene will lead to Menke's kinky hair syndrome due to copper deficiency and not excess. This is characterized by brittle hair in children. Coming on to pathophysiology, when we consider the normal copper metabolism, it is absorbed in small intestine particularly proximal small intestine, then it is bound to albumin, transported to liver and this copper is then incorporated into aposeruloplasmin forming holoceruloplasmin. This decreases the pre-copper concentration and this is finally excreted into bile via liver. What happens in Wilson's disease? As we discussed there is mutation in ATP7B this impairs the biliary copper excretion. Now, copper is not able to incorporate into aposeruloplasmin. Ceruloplasmin gets degraded quickly. Therefore, Wilson disease is characterized by low serum ceruloplasmin levels. Free copper will accumulate in hepatocytes. It will leak into bloodstream and also gets deposited into brain, cornea, kidneys, leading to organ dysfunction. Coming on to the clinical manifestations. The clinical presentation of Wilson's disease is highly variable with hepatic, neurologic and psychiatric symptoms predominating. So when we consider hepatic features, it can present in all forms. So it can present with hepatitis, hepatomegaly, acute liver failure especially in young patients and also can lead to cirrhosis. Now neurological features occurs because of predilection of copper deposition into basal ganglia. So these features will include tremor which is typically a wing beating tremor. There will be dysarthria, dystonia, typical dystonia is rhesus sardonicus which is also seen in strychnine poisoning and tetanus. Basal ganglioid copper deposition will also lead to features of Parkinsonism and gait instability. When we consider psychiatric features, these include depression, personality changes, cognitive decline, like decline in school performance. Ophthal features include Kaser Flesher rings which occurs due to copper deposition into desmet membrane of cornea and there is a typical cataract which is sunflower cataract. Now when we consider the deposition of copper in desmet membrane, it is typically golden brown cordial deposits which start in the beginning on the superior limbus. There is a formation of superior crest then there is a formation of inferior crescent and finally circumferential copper deposition occurs in desmond membrane. Also after treatment with chelation therapy this ring will disappear. Now for KF ring 
it is usually present in up to 95% of the patient with neuro wilson features of neuro wilson and up to 65% of the patients which have hepatic features of wilson's disease coming on to other systems so in hematology the patient can have coombs negative hemolytic anemia in endocrine system patient can have hypoparathyroidism delayed puberty amenorrhea and infertility renal system copper deposition in proximal convoluted tubule will lead to proximal renal tubular acidosis and loss of calcium phosphate amino acids glucose etc copper deposition in pancreas can lead to pancreatitis and it can also lead to cardiomyopathy and rarely osteoarthritis so this is the typical kaiser flecher ring in wilson disease usually it requires a slit lamp examination but in some cases it can also be seen on naked eye examination this is a typical dystonia which is known as rice sardonicus it can be seen in wilson's tetanus as well as strychnine poisoning and this is the slit lamp examination of a patient with wilson's disease showing sunflower cataract coming on to the diagnosis diagnosis is based on combination of clinical biochemical and genetic findings so as we all know ceruloplasmin levels decrease in wilson's the normal levels are 20 to 35 mg per deciliter if it is less than 5 it is confirmatory of this condition less than 10 almost confirms 10 to 20 possible and if the level is more than 20 mg per deciliter this level will rule out wilson disease now an important concept in this ceruloplasmin testing is that total serum copper is equal to 10% of non ceruloplasmin bound copper but 90% of the copper is bound to ceruloplasmin so total serum copper what will happen to total serum copper since ceruloplasmin levels are decreasing in wilson disease and it is the majority of total copper so total serum copper will also decrease but free copper which is non ceruloplasmin bound copper will increase in wilson disease so this table will summarize the findings total serum copper will be low in wilson ceruloplasmin bound copper will be low in wilson non ceruloplasmin bound copper or free copper will be elevated and since this free copper will be seen in urine 24 hour unit copper will also be elevated in wilson's disease so in labs what we will see there will be decrease serum ceruloplasmin less than 20 there will be increase 24 hour urine copper excretion which is more than 100 micrograms per day and the gold standard testing is by liver biopsy which will show increased hepatic copper content more than 250 microgram per gram dry weight of liver so this question can be asked that gold standard for diagnosis is liver biopsy and demonstration of copper slit lamp examination can demonstrate kf ring as we have already discussed now let's see what is the role of imaging in diagnosis so mri brain can show some named findings which include face of giant panda sign on midbrain pontine hyper intensity can be seen as a mercedes benz sign sign of mercedes benz this is a trisected hyper intensity and there can be abnormal cluster hyper intensity seen in wilson's disease also we can go for liver imaging and see the signs of cirrhosis so this first image is showing face of giant panda on midbrain and this pontine hyper intensity is been shown as mercedes benz signs so these are the mri signs of wilson's disease a diagnostic scoring system which is leipzig criteria has been formulated for wilson's it provides a validated system for diagnosing wilson's disease in unclear cases so it includes parameters like kf ring neurological symptoms serum ceruloplasmin 24 hour urine copper liver copper and gene which is atp7b mutation if the total score is more than equal to 4 it is diagnostic of wilson score of 3 is probable and score less than 3 is unlikely to be wilson's disease now after we have seen the clinical manifestations how to diagnose this patient let's come on to the treatment first of all the goals of treatment are to remove excess copper prevent reaccumulation of copper by maintenance therapy 
and treat the liver damage and neuro, neuro symptoms which have already occurred. So therapy includes chelators like D-penicillamine, triantine and tetrathiomolybdate. So D-penicillamine is usually used as a first line therapy but it has multiple side effects. These include initial neurological worsening. There is a typical rash known as elastosis, perforance, serpiginosa. So this rash is a typical side effect of D-penicillamine therapy and it usually occurs in neck and axillary region. It can also lead to aplastic anemia due to bone marrow suppression. There can be myasthenic crisis, drug-induced lupus, nephrotoxicity and pyridoxin has to be supplemented with this therapy because it leads to pyridoxin or vitamin B6 deficiency. Due to these multiple side effects, we have an alternative which is triantine. If the patient is not able to tolerate deep penicillin, we can give triantine. A new chelator is tetrathiomolybdate which complexes albumin and copper with itself and it is also fast acting. Then we have zinc salts like zinc acetate and sulfate. These will basically induce the metallothionin in GIT which will block gastrointestinal copper absorption. Finally, for irreversible cases or fulminant hepatic failure due to late diagnosis of this condition, we have to do liver transplant. So we have a table which can tell us the initial first line treatment according to the involved system. So if there is initial neurological or psychiatric manifestations, since deep penicillin can worsen, we will start with tetrathiomolybdate along with zinc. For hepatic decomposition mild to moderate, we can start with triantine plus zinc. If hepatic decomposition is serious, leading to cirrhosis or fulminant hepatic failure, we will directly go for liver transplant. For maintenance, pre-symptomatic patients, pediatric patients and pregnancy, zinc is the only safe therapy and it can be used also for maintenance. Now since Wilson disease is a genetic condition, there is a role of family screening. So the siblings of confirmed cases have to be screened with serum celluloplasmin, urinary copper and if these are suggestive of the condition, we will go for genetic testing if the index mutation is known. So let's summarize all we have discussed in this presentation. So Wilson's disease is copper accumulation due to mutation in ATP7B gene which is present on chromosome number 13Q. Then it is a triad basically of hepatic neurological symptoms as well as ophthalmological features like KF ring. Early diagnosis is critical to prevent irreversible damage. These are treated with chelators and zinc as maintenance therapy. Genetic counseling and lifelong follow-up is needed. So I think we have discussed all the major points of Wilson disease from Harrison. I hope you like this lecture. And finally, there is a MCQ. All of you can answer this MCQ in the comment section. Please read the question carefully and answer in the comment section. Thank you so much.